Hey, everybody. I am Holly Robinson Key, and I am joined today by my amazing and wonderful co-stars, Lindy Greenwood and Brooks Darnell. Hi, you guys. Hi, Holly. How are you Hi, guys doing? So we, have, I, we haven't seen each other since we worked together, and I missed you both. I had the best time working with you. We laughed. We cried. We hugged. We cried. <laughs> we froze. <laughs> How it was you? cold. It was a little bit cold in Ottawa. Lindy, yeah. how are you doing? I'm doing great, Holly. It is so good to see you and you, Brooks. I missed you both. Um, I'm just chilling out. I'm at home in the desert right now. So yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. same. I miss both of you guys. I mean, like I was just talking about you the other day, both of you guys. And, you know, I see you guys on on social media often and my heart just warms, but it's good to see you guys. And you're still so beautiful. I mean, it was only three weeks ago, but yeah, but, uh, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> I've had three hours of hair and makeup, so I better look beautiful. Damn it. <laughs> um, listen, we want to get started with this one. We have a lot of questions. We're very excited to see. We hope everyone is excited to see our new movie, Holiday Heritage. It's part of Countdown to Christmas. And we have a couple of questions, more than a couple, that Hallmark Channel sent our way to um, answer. So I'm going to serve as your interviewer for the day and ask you guys the questions. So you ready to get started? Nothing makes me more nervous than you interviewing me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm ready. These aren't my questions. Oh, okay, I'm good. I'm good then. I'm good. You're I'm good. good. Okay, so here we go. So okay. in Holiday Heritage, Lindy plays Ella, who goes back home to celebrate the holidays with her family when she runs into her ex-boyfriend, Griffin, played by Brooks Darnell. Can we share more about where our, the characters are when we first meet them? So, um, Lindy, give us an idea of where the characters are when we first see them before they see each other. Sure. Well, Ella has been living in Boston and she is um, working as a graphic designer at a company and trying to start her own business. So she's really far from her family. She's doing some really cool things, but she's maybe in a place of feeling a bit disconnected from the people that she loves. And Brooks, where, where is Griffin before she before Griffin sees Ella again? Griffin is in Marystown, and he has recently become the mayor, handed down from uh, Ella's grandfather, uh, who is very close to him, was like a mentor to him. So there's a little bit of family history there um, that he's very close with her family, but he loves the town and he's just taking the mantle as mayor. And then we throw everything into the mix. Um, because I think people want to know, because we didn't tell everyone, you're where are you now, Brooks? Oh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. In Vancouver right now. Well, yeah, Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. And you're shooting another yeah. movie? Shooting another another movie for Hallmark. I think it'll, it'll be like a Valentine's Day movie. Um, very fun. But we're here to talk about holiday heritage. Okay. When I am in Vancouver, shoot another movie. So get ready for that. Okay. You just wanted, just wanted to let the people know where you were, Brooks. That's all. That's all I was asking. I wasn't trying to get in your business or anything. Just <laughs> Where no, I, you but I, you know, when you get all these things, like I get a call, like, "Hey, we were supposed to talk about holiday heritage, but you went off on this tangent about your new movie." <laughs> just blame, I just it didn't blame it on me. It's all, it's all the same family. We're all good. So, right, cool. so my character Micah and her mom Tess, we run a bakery together, but their relationship is a little strained since Micah's dad and Ella's grandpa Riley passed. Um, so the question is, what is it like for these three generations to come together as they face this holiday season without him? And I'll, I'll answer that one. I mean, whenever you have a family member, that's kind of like the glue to the family, the one that makes everything all right and keeps everything together and you lose that person, um, it can be really a difficult adjustment. And, um, I know this personally, unfortunately, you just had a, um, my mother-in-law just passed away a couple of days ago and it's been, yeah, it's been awful, but like I so relate to Micah now more than ever because losing a, um, you know, a matriarch near the holidays and it's an adjustment. It's just a total adjustment. And the three generations of women in this movie are very strong women with very strong 
point opinions and points of view. And that's one thing I really love about this film is these three women who are kind of in the independent, but they're also very relying on each other. Um, so it's, it's coming together, these three women. And when Ella first kind of sees us, we're already kind of going at each other and bickering. Her first line is, uh, Merry Christmas. Like, <laughs> so, so, um, Lindy, what would you say, um, you know, what it's like for the generations to come together? What is that like? Well, it's another, it's a reason why I love this group so much is the three generations. And as you said, these very strong women who have, who are very independent, but do rely on each other. Um, and so it's a bit bumpy at first. They have different agendas and um, maybe they're conflicting. Uh, so the arc where they end up is I don't want to spoil too much, but mm -hmm. it's really beautiful to see them go through their own separate journeys, but then also come together and um, and uh, work through things as a family. So Brooks, Brooks, you play Griffin, who has a deep love for his community. And as the new mayor, you have really big shoes to fill, Grandpa Riley. Mm -hmm. um, how does Ella recruiting Griffin to help with her family impact his relationship with her? Uh, there's a tightrope there, you know, there's a tightrope that has to be walked there because, you know, Griffin never really, I think, got over Ella. Um, he never really settled that part of his life. And, um, I think it's just a, a huge, a huge responsibility for him, you know, being the mayor, being so close to the family, being, you know, who she is. Um, I think there's a huge responsibility to to deliver for her, to deliver for the family, but also to deliver for the new city that he's a mayor of. And, you know, he's he's the type of guy he's been in the city. He's, you know, he is the city. So there is a little bit of um, reluctance, I think, to to the Ella. But then there's also that 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 connection that he has or had with her. Um, but then there's also the love from from, you know, your character and Miss Tess, Micah and Miss Tess. So there's a, there's a lot to be explored. And I think this movie does it well and handles it very well that we explore all those kind of nuances of the relationship between each of the three powerful women uh, in the movie. That's what I love about your character is that you do have all those conflicting emotions, right? You do want to kind of really conflict about why she left in the first place. Mm -hmm. You become the mayor. And then, you know, you've got the community thing. So it's a really multi-layered uh, character that I found really compelling. Um, so Ella and Griffin make sure their town and family uphold festive traditions from not one, but hello, two holidays from trimming the tree to the town's Caramu Festival as part of their Kwanzaa celebrations. What are some of our, the three of us, our favorite holiday tradition. I'll start with you, Lindy. Any and any holiday. Any holiday. Well, um, Christmas, uh, my mom is from Tobago, from Trinidad and Tobago. And when we were young, she would um, have a string popcorn together on the tree. And she told us, okay, so I'm not even sure this is true. She told us that in Tobago, they would just use like a, a big old branch, essentially, for a Christmas tree. <laughs> um, and then later on, one of my friends from the Caribbean said, that's not true. Your mom just didn't want to buy a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> so when she went to the back of the back of the woods and got a branch. Yeah. Thanks. She's like, this, this is good. This will work. <laughs> no leaves, no leaves, no, no leaves, no needles. Um, but, uh, we, we did do a little bit of Kwanzaa celebrating back when I was a child. And um, I really loved talking about the seven principles and um, also that it's a multi-day festival um, right. because, you know, we only get really Christmas Eve and Christmas morning um, as, you know, uh, people who celebrate Christmas. So, yeah, those were two of my favorites. Um, awesome. What about you, Brooks? What are some of the holiday traditions <clears throat> you have in your family growing up or even now? So my uh, we we my brothers and I, I have two younger brothers, and what we used to do is on <clears throat> on uh, Christmas Eve, 
we would start off at about four o'clock and we would set traps for Santa. <laughs> <laughs> we could hear him, right? Um, we would set traps like at the garage. We would set traps at the back door. We would set traps like at windows. Humane traps? Were you just going to trap him? You're not going to. No, no. We trapping him and trying to jack the presents the whole nine. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hilarious. We just wanted to catch him. We just right. wanted to. Nice. Um, so we would, we would set traps. And I think this started when I was about nine years old. Um, and we're six and five years apart. And so oh, wow. we would set. And that kind of went until I was. It was too corny to set traps anymore. And, you know. At, uh, <laughs> or until or, so you, you couldn't trap him. So you guys just stopped. gave up. Right, right, right. Santa won. Santa Santa did win. Santa did win. But, but I haven't given up trapping him yet, though. That is too funny. Um, You know, I told you guys on set a lot how uh, I celebrated Kwanzaa a lot with my kids. um, That we love Christmas, of course. But there's something about raising these kids uh, to celebrate Kwanzaa. So after the, you know, Christmas, and of course we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, but then like, it kind of like, it's, it's so mired in gifts and what did I get? You know, you got four kids, they all looking at what each other's got. They're like, you get caught up in like sort of the gift giving energy of it, right? Um, to go to the next day, those seven days after Christmas and to be celebrating a principal every single day. I mean, the kids would dress up, they would put you know, a little kinta cloth on and like they, they got into it. And then we would have these, you know, feasts and everything. But just being able to sit around the table and light the um, canara and just be able to talk about, um, you know, community and and talk about our ancestors and all that. I really think now that I looked at these guys and they're adults, like I think it really helped them, help shape them as human beings. Like I think they're more socially conscious of their community. They're they're compassionate, like it's interesting. So um, I really do think Kwanzaa helped them, but that is something that I felt was a, a, a really great tradition as kids growing up that they really appreciate. At least that's what they tell me now that they're adults. So I love the idea of this movie being Hallmark Channel's first foray into Kwanzaa, you know, to, to talk about these two celebrations. You know, I think a lot of people don't still like, even not just people that aren't, African American, a lot of people don't. African American people, a lot of them people don't, don't know what Kwanzaa is. Still, like they're mm-hmm. still a little confused about it. And just, just so I just give a quick one on one. Like it's not a religious holiday. It's really about community and empowerment and uh, ancestry and all of that stuff. And you celebrate a different um, principle every day. And that principle is something you talk about as a family. And you have a festival and you light a candle and. Um, there's not a real religious element to it, but it's really about community and family. And so that's what it is. And for us, what's cool is that it starts the day after Christmas and then ends on New Year's Day, which also happens to be my father's birthday. And so it's kind of for us, it's been like, oh, now it's the last day, day seven is now we celebrate dad, granddad. So that was really, really a cool thing. Um, OK. And speaking of Kwanzaa, so Grandpa Riley's Kwanzaa chest holds a special meaning for our family and Griffin. So now we're going to check out this very special sneak peek of this scene from Holiday Heritage. Dad's Kwanzaa chest. Kwanzaa baby. That was a scene from Holiday Heritage. Um, that Kwanzaa chest is something we've opened many times. You bring out the libation cup and the canara, and it's like, oh, it's Kwanzaa time. And every time we bring out those little outfits, you know, a year later, those kids had grown out of those outfits. I had to go down to look. <laughs> Ladera Heights in, in the community in LA and get brand new outfits made of Kinta cloth. That was always cute. 
um, until it wasn't cute for them anymore. You know, they grew out of that. And they're like, mom, we're not putting that hat on today. We're not doing that. But they still love celebrating like the principles. And uh, uh, I love that. Um, and um, so it feels like, you know, the mood was kind of somber in that clip. Um, we know it's a Kwanzaa celebration. So what was going on here? Do you remember, Lindy? Well, it's definitely, there's a lot of mixed emotions in this movie, as, as Brooks kind of mentioned already. And um, Grandpa Riley has passed. So there is this, uh, this heartache and this longing for, our, for my grandpa, for your dad. Um, so, you know, it's bittersweet to remember someone that you love that's moved on. Um, yeah. to celebrate traditions that involved someone else that no longer does, even though they're there in spirit. It's, it's bittersweet. It is. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in celebrating Kwanzaa, the lighting of the candles and the Kanara represents the seven principles. Mm -hmm. They are unity, self-determination, collective responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Um, just want to share what any of those means to you, Brooks. You can just choose one. You don't have to do them all. But th what do those mean to you and your family? Um, economic responsibility. <clears throat> I think that's a big one. Um, because I think oftentimes, or at least to, to me and my family, oftentimes that's what um, sometimes doesn't get passed down from generation to generation. Some mm -hmm. things do get passed down, unity, um, community, but economic responsibility oftentimes doesn't get passed down from gener or or taught to to future generations. So that's something that you know my parents instilled in us. Um, that actually my my grandparents um, tried to instill, but maybe didn't get instilled as much as it could have. So my parents made a diligent effort to instill that in us and us, you know, to future generations. So for us, I think that's something that really holds true is is economic responsibility to make sure that future generations have something there for themselves um, that they can call their own that has been passed down, but also is is also community based. Like what what have you done for the community um, economically and, and what have you given back? So that's something that's real important to us. Hmm. Lindy. Kuchichagulia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. That was we had the best time. So we, we had a Kwanzaa expert on the set. And you know, I was telling producers, we, we don't need no thinking expert. You got me. So I was trying to like take on the role of the Kwanzaa expert. So when I hear Kuchi Jagulia, which is one of the principles, I always like think hear my kids' voices saying it. You know, Kuchi Gagulia. But remember, we were on set and I used to always say, or the kids said, Kuchijagulia. So mm -hmm. the accent was on the wrong place. So me and the Kwanzaa expert got into it. And I was trying to say, no, it's Kuchijagulia. <laughs> he was like, no, it's Kuchijagulia. And it was hilarious. But, um, you know, these are things that are like fun moments when you celebrate Kwanzaa because you have these fun memories. And we were just all together, the whole family, for the first time in a while in Japan. And we were laughing about some of, some of those Kwanzaa celebrations. But I think what um, my favorite principle, uh, they're all great. And definitely the, the cooperative economics is one of my favorites too, Brooks. But I love the um, unity one for right now. I feel like, you know, everybody's so divided and there's so much polarization in this world, in this country and in families even. And I think that unity coming together, um, finding common purpose is so important right now. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the traditional meals um, that you all celebrate or you have in your family that you um, think about when you think about Christmas or Kwanzaa? Lindy, is there a meal? I know, does your mom throw down some of that Trinidad food? Like what, what, did, what did you guys eat around the holidays? So I have, um, my parents got divorced when I was very young. So I was able to celebrate Christmas on multiple days. Um, yeah. So at my mom's house in the morning, she would make saltfish and bake. Yes. And it was my favorite thing. Um, bake is like a kind of unleavened bread and the saltfish with the peppers and the um, it's delicious. Um, and then at my dad's house for Christmas morning, he would make like kind of an English breakfast. I'm Canadian. So, you know, bacon, eggs, uh, 
home fries, toast. So I really love uh, the contrast there. And I love starting the day with like a celebratory meal. You got that multicultural flavor for the holidays when you got a little (laughs) bit of everything. My mouth was watering hearing about that salt fish. I love that so Mm -hmm. much. Um, I tried that in Jamaica and it just, oh my God, it was so good. good. What about you, Brooks? Do you do any like favorite dishes come to mind when you think of the holidays? Yeah, we, uh, my family would go, go to, uh, my dad's side and all the aunts and uncles and cousins, we would all go for Christmas breakfast Mm. on Christmas day. And uh, I can just remember everybody putting on everything new they got to go to the Christmas breakfast. (laughs) Um, but (laughs) But uh, grits, I know it's simple. I know it's simple, but I just remember grits. What are you put on your grits, Brooks? Extra cheese, extra butter, a uh, little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then have some syrup on the side when I need a little kick of sweet. That's it. Oh, okay. Wow. Did you make? Did you ever have shrimp with it or any kind of protein? Or you just did the? I'm grits? allergic to shellfish, so I never did the shrimp. Right. Thing. But they they used to. But you yes. know, you have like two pieces of bacon sticking out, and then you pour the bacon out, and they got the grits on it. But, oh, yeah, oh yes. I love that. I love that. Well, um, to, you, Holly. oh, funny you should ask. Well, we always almost burn the house down every year frying a turkey. <laughs> frying a turkey. <laughs> we, do, right. we do fried turkey. Fried okay. Egg. And it's deep fried turkey. And, you know, you, you can Google it. Like, it's the cause of so many fires because people put the turkey in frozen. You have to thaw the whole turkey out. I mean, there can't be a little bit of ice on the inside. You have to have the turkey thawed. And that's how people get in trouble and st- and the fire department has to come. Um, but, you know, Rodney Pete thinks he, he's got this down, but he's impatient. He can't wait for the thing to completely thaw. So it's been a whole issue. But when they're done right, they are unbelievable because we usually Cajun fry them and then inject them with like this like Cajun um, spices and stuff. So it's uh, it's a whole experience. The fried turkeys are really yummy. So what we do. And then I always have to do two mac and cheeses because I have a son who has a dairy allergy. So I have to do a vegan mac and cheese, which actually comes out really good. And then I have to do a regular one. Um, so those are the two dishes that I think about the most when I think about Christmas or Kwanzaa. And because, you know, for Kwanzaa, we, we used to just, you know, eat all of our Christmas leftovers, get really because you have a feast, right? We would just get really creative with our Christmas leftovers for the Kwanzaa dinners. Um, maybe add a little extra dessert here or there, but that would be it. Um, yes, it's such a great time for food. So this has been amazing. I have loved talking to love just reconnecting with you guys. We had an awesome time on set together. I speak for all of us because You know, I just feel like, you know, you get on these movies and you work with people and you have a good time and then you leave and then you like really go, oh, I really miss these people. Like when Brooks left, I was really sad. And then Lindy and I had our last night together and it was like four or five in the morning. We were like dying, but we were. And that was an intense scene to end on. We had like the most intense scene in the movie Mm -hmm. and we were like hopped up on coffee, like, oh my gosh, we're going to get through this. Uh, but it was such a good experience. And I just want to thank both of you for being such awesome co-stars. And I hope we get to do this again sometime. Yes. Same here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We got to, we got to, we got to figure out a way for, for us to make it happen. Cause I, I really did enjoy hanging out with you guys, both of you guys, you know, learned a lot from both of you guys, as far as, you know, just life and stuff like that. So it's, it was a good time. It was a good it time. It really was. It yeah, really was. It was okay, really before good. before we go, we're gonna do a rapid fire game of this or that. Cool. Okay. Okay. Inspired by holiday heritage and countdown to Christmas. So we're each gonna answer this. We're gonna rapid fire. Um, I'll start with you. Well, I'll start with question number one, rapid fire number one, and Linda, you answer, then Brooks, then I'll answer. Okay. It's always giving me anxiety. It's fine. I'm good. Let's you do go. it. You can do it. <laughs> Okay, follow traditional recipes or make up new ones, Lindy. Traditional recipes. Make up new ones. Traditional recipes. Okay. <laughs> Fa- uh, uh, oh, candy cane coffee. Ooh. Or hot cider. 
Ooh. Hot cider. Candy cane coffee. Oh, my goodness. Candy cane coffee with a little extra special mama juice in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Gingerbread cookies or Yule log cake, Lindy? I already Gingerbread know. cookies. I already know. You love them cookies. You were trying to. Gingerbread <laughs> cookies. The props couldn't even get enough cookies. Lindy wanted to eat. Oh, them. that's right. Remember? Oh, oh my gosh, that's right. Jones and for those cookies. Yes. Ginger you're like, cookies. okay, calm down. Gingerbread cookies all the way for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, attend a tree lighting ceremony or light Kwanzaa candles? Kind of a quick tr- trick question. I, you would do, you could have room for both. Both is your answer? Yeah. Both. <laughs> I'm going with both too. I'm going with both too. I'm going with both too. Okay, and finally, decorate a tree or decorate cookies. Tree. Tree. Cookies for me. Just mm. the tree. Just I'm a Virgo and I just overdo it and I can't <laughs> stop. <laughs> and then you tear the whole thing down. You're like, it wasn't right. I got to start again. Start all over again. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, oh, here's a couple more. Ready? Listen to Christmas albums or go caroling? Christmas albums. Christmas albums. Come on. Okay. I'm adding this. DJ to Christmas albums. I want to listen to them. I want to DJ them. I, I, be- I am I'm going off script and adding it. Okay. Favorite Christmas song, Lindy? Um, Boney M. Um, the Drummer Boy. What is that? You know that Boney M Christmas album? Boney M? Who? Uh, Heart now here. The angels sing the king. Okay, anyway. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I just learned about Boney M on this movie. I never even heard of Boney M. I never heard of Boney M until I met Lindy. Really? My mom really played played that to the point where I love it now. I might not have at first, but I hammered it into my head. Well, it's beautiful. I love learning new ones because I listen to the same ones over and over again. For me, it's all about Jackson 5 and Santa Claus is coming down. I love that one. What about you, Brooks? Um, probably Nat King Cole, or I know it's a little, whatever, but Mariah Carey, that Christmas. I was just going to say, come on, Mariah Carey, we're all thinking it. It just hit number one on the Billboard charts. It is. Again? Uh, Every year it does. So, you know what? That, that, that is not a wrong answer. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, two more Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. Oh, Christmas morning. That's a close one. I got to go with Christmas too, but it's close. It's close. It's I close. think I'm going to say Christmas Eve. There's something just, it's the anticipation that made it so warm and exciting. And then Christmas morning is just like such a drop off. Once those presents are open, everybody, it just feels like <laughs> it just kind of, it feels a little anticlimactic. I mean, they're both amazing, but I think. Well, I'm looking nice. at that window right before you open the presents when you wake up. Yes, you that's what I'm talking about. That's that it. window is where I'm at. You're yeah. right. You're right. It's somewhere between Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. It's like that. Mm, the magic hour. Um, holidays in your hometown or somewhere new? Wow. You know, I was going to say hometown, but this year I'm actually staying in the desert and I'm really excited about it. So this year, somewhere new. I, I think I flopped. I think a year or two ago, I would have said away. But being on two movies and not having been home much, I'm looking forward to being home like, you know, like Lindy, too. So this year, I think home. But I'll flop next year. I'll probably be like, no, I want to go to France and do Christmas there, New York. <laughs> I like someplace new. I love home, being home, but I, 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 would, I love just experiencing Christmas somewhere else. Um, OK, well, listen, this has been amazing. Uh, I want to remind everyone that you can tune in to Holiday Heritage on Hallmark Channel Friday, this Friday, December 16th at 8 p.m. 7 Central, only on Hallmark Channel. And please tweet along while you watch. Use hashtag Holiday Heritage. I'll be live tweeting. I'd love to engage with you. And um, we just can't wait for you to see this movie. Um, It's full of love and Christmas and culture and food and family and friendship. So thank you so much, Lindy. And thank you, Brooks. Um, It's been great seeing you guys and talking to you. And I can't wait to talk to you guys again. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye.